need to. No, I had a meeting. I had something this morning, so I haven't seen any email that came in. It was just for the link. She was asking about oh, the okay. panelist link. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're recording. All right. Excellent. Thank you. So I am calling to order the September 14th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee at 9.07 a.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And I will just uh, make sure that everybody can hear, be heard and uh, hear. So let's start with you, Mandy. Present. Uh, Jennifer. Present. And you can hear me um, and Athena. We can, I think we can hear you too. And you can hear us. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So um, I'm just taking a look here. Um, so this has been a really difficult, I just want to share a couple weeks in my uh, both personal life and professionally with the council and other matters that have just been sort of all encompassing um, between council and finance and everything that's going on. Um, and I've also had some, some sort of significant personal matters. So um, I don't feel as prepared for this meeting as I like to be, and I'm going to go through each agenda item that we have on here, and we can talk about what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so the first being uh, the, well, so bylaw 3.39, we're good there. Uh, we're ready to talk about that and hopefully vote on that. Um, Mandy provided some language and it's excellent, but we'll look at it together. It's in the packet. I've spoken with Chief Nelson about it. He uh, was very, very happy with it. And we can talk a little bit more about that when we get to that. Um, discharging of firearms. I spoke with Paul. Um, Paul was not, he said it wasn't normal procedure or typical procedure to have the law firm come to a meeting. Um, they like to receive the questions in writing and then respond to them in writing. So Paul is still waiting to receive the opinion back on the question we had. And actually the question that I had that I posed initially with the request to have KP Law join us was pretty general. Um, I really just took it out of the minutes. Um, so I'm going to respond. I think Paul being on vacation, there's a few things that are just maybe, I just think there's, there's still time is what I'm saying for me to pose a more specific question. So what I'll do is I'll show you the email that I sent to him and we can talk about whether that's the question that we want to ask, or if we want to ask additional questions. Um, and then the um, suicide prevention proclamation, I'm about halfway through. I spoke with Lynn and she said that I basically there were two ways we could go about it. One being I can share with you what I have so far and then we can make a motion um, that allows me as the chair to declare it clear, consistent and actionable after the meeting. Or I can send it to her when I finish it today she can officially refer it uh, by sending it out to the council and we'll still come out of here with a motion that allows me to declare it clear, consistent and actionable. So that way it gets to the council by the 19th. Um, and then equity lens, I spoke with Jennifer. Um, my plan yeah. on that is to meet with Paul, which I haven't been able to do yet, um, to talk with him about how we might collaborate with staff without, I don't, I want to make sure I'm going through the right processes in terms of inviting them to meetings. Um, and so having a work plan that he feels comfortable with in terms of that. Okay. That was a lot. So I'm going to pause there and just see if there are any general questions or comments, and then we can go through everything. <clears throat> Go ahead, Jennifer. Yeah. No, I, I, well, I'm going to take up a minute of the public meeting to say this. Please. <laughs> no, I just, when you mentioned you were giving your update, I think, on the Board of Health at the Council lia your liaison report, 
you gave so many updates on so many different committees that you're involved in. And then when you mentioned that you just happened to meet with our state representatives that day, mm -hmm. I was just thinking, how do you do it all? Mm -hmm. So I think you're, you're taking on so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, I appreciate it. I don't know if that's a compliment or a warning, but. Um. <laughs> well, it's both, but you, be kind to yourself. No, I was like, where did you, you just mentioned this as a side. And then when I met with, you know, our state representatives today, I'm like, what? <laughs> well, to be fair, that meeting was scheduled for weeks. Um, yeah, but still, you. I know, I know. Yeah. And you have so, two kids at home. Yeah, it's a lot. And this past couple of weeks have been in just uh, getting Alex into a new school has been harder than a bigger challenge than I had anticipated. Um, but it's, it's we going did to see start. him come and give you a kiss goodnight on screen. So sweet. <laughs> He literally, I was really wanting to come into the town room and, but he is getting used to doing a lot of homework um, that he did not have previously. And that is a big bump up in his, you know, mental. anyway, uh, anyway, my whole personal life getting laid out. No, no, I'm just saying, I but, just wanted to say that. But. Yeah, no, thank you. And, and, you know, the board of health meeting, it, unfortunately the first time I was actually able to attend as a liaison so I was happy to be able to do that but I think we're all taking on a lot and I think this library piece has been really a lot especially if you're on the finance committee too because it was you know anyway um compliment and warning noted thank you and <laughs> are there any other comments um before we move into the i'd like to start with the bylaw the number street numbering bylaw all right so mandy if you want to pull that up that'd be great it's in the packet right I, it is in the packet okay <laughs> you meant you mentioned that just now and um I didn't know there was stuff in SharePoint, so I just posted it online now. So it's available online now. Thank you, Athena. Yeah, my, you know, um, I think I sent you an email and said that this was in the packet, but that other things would be coming and um, and then never followed up um, with that because nothing else came. So um, yeah, but thank you for posting it. Um, and so this is the, uh, what, uh, Mandy worked on, and this is what I shared with the chief, and he was very happy with it. He was really happy with uh, the change from just being houses to buildings. Um, he thought that that was a really like necessary change, and he thought that would be very helpful. Um, he also said that the rest of the language in terms of like the size and everything um was was really good and i think he even said that mandy did you pull this like according to a state state law or so i did not i just used our basic language and then saw if it would be logical to make the numbers bigger than two and a half inches um hence the note below about what the standard sort of sizes are on various things um but no it was not state law or anything um i just sort of made it up based on what was already there and it did not have a violation section um if everyone remembers the only part of this before was the homeowner shall indicate without any means of enforcement um since there was no notice of no indication of what a violation would be so i added one mm -hmm. um I don't think it would ever be enforced, right? I picked a random number. Um, yeah. You know, <laughs> we could potentially say first offense warning and correction notice or something, you know, <laughs> like um, basically like the goal that. is not to find people $25. It's to have them spend less than $25 to put the number on the building. <laughs> um, but um, so we could yeah. change that up a little bit, but I felt like we should at least somehow indicate who enforces this that's not the police per se, because I really think the police aren't the ones that are going to be looking at it. It's the fire department. Um, it'll be more the fire department or just the inspector people, yeah. um, our inspection people. Um, we could add the police in for non-criminal. Um, they obviously, for calls, need to be able to find buildings too. Um, but 
Yeah. Uh, do you think we'll have any issues with like how many buildings that are not houses do you think we have? I was trying to like look around as I've been driving around, but that you think we might have that aren't numbered. Is that something that we might, it might, how will we communicate this to people, I guess? I think it would be an issue, right? Again, I think the communication is when the fire inspection services are there for some other reason, right? Inspections, you know, health inspectors need to go in all restaurants, right, on a regular basis, and everyone's in on a regular basement basis, they say, hey, you don't have a number, put the number up, you know, like, I, I really think that that's how you enforce it, right, um, when you notice it. Um, I was noticing, you know, my guess is a lot of the buildings, especially in the block buildings in downtown, may not have numbers on their you know, doors are the most likely place to put it, like just on the window part of the door. And they may not because it's just, you're you're just supposed to know. And, and even when- no, You know where the toy box services, is. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's the emergency at, you know, Black Sheep or it's the emergency at, you know, what was the works at one point or the library. They're not handing you a address number, right? Um, so they might not be there. Um, I did notice like the very new University Drive South. I don't know whether it's one University Drive South or whatever they call themselves, the one that's on the corner of U Drive um, yeah. and yeah. Line that went up, spelled out their numbers on everything. Um, so it it actually says one or one hundred, I think it's one, has has O N E and then University Drive South. And it looks really nice. Um, but this would that would not be in compliance with what we're writing. And so they would have to find somewhere on the building to, to put the number one. Yeah. <laughs> um, that shouldn't be too difficult, I would think. But uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Is there a way that we, or that you have seen with new, not new bylaws, but where a change like this is occurring where a letter could potentially go out to building owners? I mean, I wouldn't know. That would be more of the building commissioner, right? Or or Dave. Um, you know, we just changed the bylaws and <laughs> leave yeah. the executive to figure out how to do I guess we'll just things. send it to them as a notice, like, <laughs> hey, this got changed, you know, kind of thing. So they at least know that it got changed. <laughs> And so I picked three. I, I just want to say one other thing. I used three inches um, because the mailbox reflective stickers are basically three inches tall. Um, you know, I think three inches is actually too tiny yeah, for, I do too. on a house. But yeah. but we if we're trying to not write different standards for different places, like, oh, if it's on the house, it has to be five. But if it at least five, but if you were putting it near the road, you know, um, so that's why I picked three. I would hope that most people use something bigger if they're putting it on the house, but three would allow all the mailbox numbers to be compliant. Mm -hmm. Or the, if we went up to five, then the red flags that Pat was referring to wouldn't be compliant too, because I, I went out and measured the ones that are on my street and those are four inches tall. So, yeah. um, you know, while three inches might, it, it's better than two and a half, <laughs> but, but that's the reason I picked three. Yeah. Hence the note below about heights. Yeah, I, it looks good to me. Do you, Jennifer, what I I did like what you were what you were go, where you were going with the warning. I don't know if we've ever, if we have that anywhere else, um, but. Um, I think uh, that a warning makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I agree. And like Mandy said, for less than $25, you could get the numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think that's good. I mean, I find that um, on most businesses, did I lose you? No. I just went, my screen just went blank. <laughs> yeah, I, I do find that most businesses it's very hard you know particularly if it's like where Xana's and the toy box is I mean they it may not be that particular they may have numbers but it's when there's a lot of businesses in one building uh, it's very hard to find yeah the addresses yeah. but again you probably don't need it so much because if you said there was an emergency at Xana's you'd know how to they'd know how to get there no 
I'm also but thinking should, of but they should still have visible numbers as much as they can. Yeah, because there might be like I mean, also for crest purposes, they're probably right. the responders are newer. Um, maybe not. They're not to the community. No, and certainly if it was in one of the village centers, you know that you don't one isn't personally familiar with, you wouldn't even yeah. know maybe the name of the build the business. I have no idea why this line is showing up. Is it repeating a pattern or something? There you go. Oh. It's supposed to be, well, it's supposed to be this line underneath, but I don't know why it's. Anyway, um, that's probably not the correct language. Um, let me see if I can find something in a different bylaw that's a little that has multiple offenses. Yeah. I just don't know which bylaws. Oh, here we go. For first violation, second violation, third and subsequent violations. Okay. Which one has it? I'm curious which one you're looking at. Um, I'll tell you in a second. Yeah, yeah, take your time. Sorry. No, it's... Um, ban on EPS foams is the first one I came across. Oh, <laughs> there's others, but that's the first one I came across. And I did change the title because it's no longer just houses. Yep. So buildings, how do we define buildings? I mean, is that, so that's before it was just, it didn't include like multi-unit or? It was, it was homeowners last time. Homeowners, yeah. Interesting. So Which I is think why you could argue it wasn't business owners or commercial buildings. It was only residential buildings. Right, right. And so I've just changed it to building owners. But like, for example, a, a, like a gas station, like Rens or something like in the, it, like with that, that's a building, right? There's a building. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that, I don't know what's there or not there, but just as an example, that would be now something that would require this. Right. And, okay. and most businesses, you know, when I've noticed numbers on businesses, most businesses, when they do number, put it above sort of on the transom of the door mm -hmm. or along the side of the door. Right. Um, that's where you find it a lot. Um, you know, which is when it's there, it's helpful if you're looking for a random law office that's in the middle of the building um, and there aren't signs outside. Right. Um, you know, when you're trying to find an entrance in a new place. So. And do you think that it's clear when we say if necessary, what necessary means, you know what I mean? Like, what are the, um, <laughs> what are the, what are the particular, uh, you know, I, my words aren't coming, but um, I think you know what I mean. Yeah, so we could add the, if necessary, to be easily seen from the street at an additional location, easily visible from the public way. Yeah. Like, like, like we could do that. I mean, it's amazing. Kind of how often, but 
right? You're actually looking for a number and can't find it. Exactly. And I always think if it's there, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, it was my way of trying to figure out how if you're on a flag lot or something, or yeah. if that four inches is behind 12 trees, right? right. Um, put it up at the street too, somehow. Um, or like you said, if it's on a door and the door is propped open, then you... Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. Any other suggestions or comments about this? Mm -hmm. All right. Mandy, do you want to make the motion? Um, sure. What I'm going to do when I send this off to Athena is delete the notes section from the one I send off because that's not part of the bylaw. But okay. I think you'll have it in the copy that's in the packet for putting in like the memo of here's how we got to three inches, essentially. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that will be really helpful. Um, so I guess um, I move to recommend the council adopt the revisions to general bylaw 3.39 street numbering of houses. Yeah. <laughs> now buildings. No, sure. Well, well, I, I, I think we need to refer to it until it's changed as of houses. <laughs> I, <agree. laughs> uh, I second that. <laughs> Which would include a to a multifamily house. Well, it's buildings now, so it'll now include everything. It says building, right, okay, I thought you were saying, yeah. Yeah, so, so the right. current title is street numbering of houses, so I okay, think now it says buildings. the right. motion should read. Yeah, okay, second. Yeah, actually, did you finish the, saying the whole thing, declare it clear, consistent, actionable? I second Oh, I guess we could say, because because this is beyond clear, consistent, and actionable, right? So right revisions to street number and also declare those revisions clear consistent and ac actionable there we go had, had you seconded michelle i faked I out. seconded it before she made that okay. so you go ahead and you second no, you <laughs> whatever <laughs> all right i okay. seconded <laughs> athena knows what we're getting at yeah yeah and uh let's vote jennifer yes um yes mandy aye all right great thank you uh, that's good. Feels good to get one thing done. <laughs> and actually, that's important. It's one of those things. <laughs> I, know. I know, absolutely. Um, so with respect to suicide prevention, um, I really, this was something really was important to me. Um, and so I have taken it on, on my own because I didn't, Lynn basically hasn't, no, she hasn't sent it out for referral or to ask for anybody additional to work on it. And quite honestly, I haven't had time to ask anybody. So um, what I'd like to do, if possible, is um, be able to finish it. I, I have about four where or five whereas clauses. I'm making it one page um, right now, just to keep it short. And um I'd like to finish it today, have Lynn refer it to the council um, formally or to the GOL, excuse me, formally, and then, uh, but come out of here today with a motion that allows me to declare it clear, consistent and actionable so that it can be there on Monday. Um, do you think, does anyone see a problem with that? Like getting pulled out of consent or, or anything? I mean, obviously if it's just like junk, I'm sure someone would pull it out, but I hope it won't be junk. Mandy. So is the goal to be able to put it on consent? Um, because we have a provision in our rules that if it doesn't go to GOL, you just have to waive, I don't know what rule it is, but Tina will know off the top of her head, the rule that requires it, GOL to have declared it clear, consistent, and actionable. Um, and I think we've done that on consent before, as well as the actual proclamation on consent when that's happened. Um, this one's a new one, so maybe that's what Lynn's a little hesitant about, but I'm not sure we have to assign that to you if um, we just use that waiver. That'd be, I don't think Lynn was hesitant. That wasn't my, like about any of it. She was like, whatever works kind of thing. So if there's a rule that allows that, um, and maybe Athena could, uh, or we could look it up actually, right? We can pull up. Oh, go ahead. It's, it's 8.2 F. 8.2 F. Okay. So 
Sorry, I just grabbed my. Uh, so does that mean we don't have to do anything here, Athena? Um, I would suggest that the committee doesn't have the proclamation to do anything with yet. So yeah. I would, I would, uh, I think that the the easiest thing would be to request that the president put it on the agenda along with a waiver of that uh, rule. Uh, the waiver could go in consent. I'm not sure, Mandy. Do you think the the adoption of the proclamation itself could go on consent because it hasn't it hasn't received any unanimous recommendation from from a committee? I guess the the president could determine if it was non controversial. Then it could go on consent. Sorry, I'm thinking through this out loud. <laughs> yeah, and I think we've done that before, but I think we've only done it with those that have are sort of the yearly ones that we've seen before, Athena. But you know, I. You've heard me in agenda setting when I was there regularly of as much can go on consent as possible. And so I would say it can go on consent and see if someone pulls it off. All right. Well, I'll I'll send it to Lynn when I finish with it today. I would agree with that. Tell her what we talked about. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, well, good. That covers that. Um, and then, yeah, so discharging of firearms, um, like I said, let me pull up what I sent to all. Let's see here. And I, yeah, I'm going to just share my screen here. Hopefully. Okay. Um, let's see. Just move this over here. So this was a very, if you just want to take a minute to read it. Okay. All right. And then Paul basically responded and said um, that he's posed the question to the attorney, but they don't typically invite attorneys to public meetings. Um, and then I sort of tried to boot it up onto his inbox again. And he said that he would try to get me an opinion for today written, but that he didn't this morning as of 719 didn't have one yet. Okay. So I think it's just is what and then and what I wanted to ask is really was this the question or do we want to have some questions that I can forward to Paul after the meeting and be more specific? Do you want me to keep this up or can I take this this down? You can take that down. You can take okay. that down. Thanks. So I mean I think the question is the tension between sort of where I stand of not wanting to mess with something that doesn't seem broken. Mm -hmm. um, and Michelle, you're, I think you were the one that wanted to remove both. I, mean, I even think air rifles, you were proposing to remove that entire section. Yeah, um, so it's yeah. not just shotguns with potentially adding in a hunting exception. Um, and the question is, if we were, I, you know, I, I would say one of the bigger questions for me is if shotguns and air guns were removed as exemptions, whole, you know, wholesale exemptions, what specific exemptions and the wording form might we need to add into whatever that second section's numbered yeah, uh, to ensure that we're not um, unreasonably eliminating certain uses that the full shotgun and um, air gun exception right now allow. Um, you know, and particular ones that we've mentioned are hunting, and I would say hunting for not just recreational purposes. Some mm -hmm. people hunt for actual food purposes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, I would call that not recreational if you're killing that deer so you can eat it. Yeah. Um, you know, um, the, we, we heard from the chief, but the sort of game for, you know, BB guns, um, but paintball guns, those types of, you know, like 
almost recreational uses of those. Um, what did she I, did she say that 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 she said that that paintball guns were not air guns? I'm still unsure of how that's the case, but um, again, we don't know the law, right? And so maybe they're not because an air gun is defined as certain firepower, right? And we just don't know, and they don't have that. Um, you know, whether the exemptions that are already there in that second set allow for target shooting on your own land or whether you have to have like a formally approved target range gun. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that was one of the things I mentioned was, well, if you own five acres, if you take shotguns out, can you no longer target shoot on your own land? Right. Um, because is that, I don't know whether the way the second part is worded um, covers informal target shooting right um yeah. you know so things like that that I just don't know what the consequences of removing that are well Give the other the thing we might relate to the state law right <laughs> yeah absolutely and I think we need to ask all these questions but I I was also thinking about like if we added something within the context of the law um, that made it clear that we, uh, that modified shotguns that are considered then assault rifles under state law are not acceptable and, instead of removing the exemption of shotgun and air guns. Would that be a question? It'd be okay to ask to look at it, alter to like do it that way as well as a possibility um, because that's my concern is not the shotgun, just the shotgun itself at all. It's that the shotgun gets modified with just some, um, accessories and then it becomes an assault rifle. Um, but it's so is that considered. already covered by state law? I think that state law does say, um, that assault rifles are not legal. Um, but I'm not sure that it covers a modified shotgun, like that someone would make at home, like a home, you know what I mean? Modification type thing. No, I, I think that's a good question too, because, and, and, and to play in some sense that the opposite advocate, um, Target shooting, though, target practice, there are a number of people who enjoy um, target shooting with rapid fire automatic weapons. Um, and, and Jennifer's like, how dare they, right? <laughs> but there are a number of people, and, and that's actually where, you know, if you think about gun ranges, a lot of people will go there just so they can shoot off an automatic weapon that we would consider an assault weapon because they get a kick out of it, but they're doing it in a safe environment, right? right. They're in the range right. and all of that. And again, it goes back to my question of what about home ranges? Because we do have people that own a lot of land, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, so it goes back to what, I guess my question for the committee is what are we trying to prevent in this bylaw that is not already prevented at state law? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, um, yeah. that that's the question I'd, I'd like to hear answered. Because I don't know what we're trying to get to that's already prohibited. Um, yeah, I think it really depends on the state law question. And I would want to look at that or ask our KP law to look at that, because if it's already um, if assault rifles even if they're shotguns that have been modified if if those are already not allowed by law in the state of massachusetts then you know but i what i'm personally trying to prevent is that if we exempt shotguns and a shotgun can mean a, a gun that has now been modified to be an assault rifle um i want to prevent i want to i want to prevent that um, prevent what though prevent like, people from owning them because this bylaw doesn't do that right um, no from discharging right so this is a discharging so from being but but i hear what you're saying about like okay 
I don't know that it's legal to discharge an assault rifle on your own. Right. That scares me. Even. Well, well that's what I don't know. Right. I, okay. I, I so don't let's get know. that in. Right. Because yeah. I think being able to do that on your personal property, I don't, I mean, this, if the state law allows it, that's the way it is. But that it does. I feel I, like that's when you read that some five year old got killed because, yeah. 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 Accidentally. I mean, I pulled up like Wikipedia. I think I put it in the packet last week, the state law from Wikipedia. Um, uh, the definitional state law of what I, a weapon is, but we still don't know what the discharge laws, you know, I, we, we, right. this is where I struggle, right? Because I think the one law that this bylaws referenced prohibits discharging things within 500 feet of a building or something. Um, you know, and so that already eliminates a whole lot of what people are concerned about, right? Um, and that's covered at state law. Um, and so it's it's the beyond stuff that, uh, from my understanding, is what this bylaw regulates, um, is things beyond that 500. And, you know, even if you're allowed to discharge a firearm at 600 feet, if you injure someone, you're still liable, right, on a civil side. You know, it's not like, oh, well, I could, so just because I hit someone means I'm not liable, right? You know, I mean, there's there's still, you injured someone, right? Um, you know, and so I guess that's where I, I, I just don't know what problem we're trying to solve and yeah. what we're trying to prevent with the revisions. And so, there's the clarity on the questions I have about what those revisions would do, but then there's the, for you and Pat and, you know, the rest of the committee, yeah. what, what is the problem you're trying to solve and is this the right way to go about it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me see what I can do to kind of take that feedback and put it into um, some questions um, for KP Law. And I wanted to ask this. So one of the things that came up when I did sit in on the Board of Health meeting is they had an agenda item um, about guns as gun violence as a public health matter. Um, and they talked for about 15 minutes. They talked about what sorts of policies they may consider. Um, and I was just, and they also presented a really good report um, that that was interesting that I want to take a look at. But is this a case where the conversation should be more holistic or are we really like doing something so specific in this bylaw that it you know, that it, like, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm presenting questions to Paul to present to KP Law, and I know that they're also questioning some things, should I get with them first and say, like, is there a more comprehensive list of questions around guns that we want to be asking our legal people? I think it would be worth mentioning to Paul that there might be an intersection, right? Um, you know, and and is this bylaw the right bylaw? You know, like maybe right. there you know, I, I don't know how you'd word that, but I, I do think, you know, gun violence is definitely an epidemic, right? You know, like I despite everything I've been saying in this meeting where people might be like, oh, where's Mandy Stan? Gun violence is an epidemic, you know. Um, number one cause of death in like Chicago. Right, you know, we we have a problem with guns in this country. At the same time, I recognize there are very many people who enjoy the sport of shooting, right. um, and then there are many people who actually have to use weapons to defend their property, um, their um, ranches, their cattle, their their agriculture, and also that use those weapons to find food and eat mm -hmm. and and get you know, and so. It's finding that balance is what I'm worried about here. Um, yeah, but I do think there is that intersection. And so, if if the public health, if the board of health is looking at potentially, I, I don't know whether they could regulate stuff under their regulation power or not. But if they're looking at that, we wouldn't want to be doing anything here that contradicts that. We would want to be complementary to that. And so, it might require working together or at least Paul knowing. Okay. 
there might be other stuff going on. Yeah, I think that's a really, yeah, that's a really good idea. And so I'll, I'll approach it, um, in that way and, and see where we, and see where we get and <laughs> we'll go from there. I did include chief Livingstone on the email communications as well. So he's been in the loop about, about this. Um, okay. So I think that's all for that one for now. Um, and let's see here, uh, discharging suicide. We did that. Okay. So equity lens. Um, like I said, I did speak with Jennifer. Um, my concern after speaking with not concern, I'm actually quite amazed at they're going through a process of work, um, including a strategic plan, including, some other requests like the resident oversight board and other pieces that they're working on right now. And so um, my, like when I initially kind of brought this, uh, there were two pieces. There were the, the equity lens review process that we've talked about. And then there was the piece where I wanted us to look at our charge and consider whether adding um, equity somehow was appropriate. And, um, I think the, my thinking process around that was, uh, not necessarily that it had to be even one of the conditions of clear, consistent and actionable, but that there might be some language written into the charge that simply acknowledges and identifies equity as something that, and I think you made it this point, Mandy, and it was a really good point, um, about, substance and about like, well, if let's say something came to us and we from, from another committee that was referred to us and we looked at it and we used that equity lens or we thought we were using some equity, you know, awareness there, we would need to send it back with a note basically to the committee that it came from saying, hey, we think this might not be equitable for this reason, but we don't get into substance. So you need to, to kind of determine that with your committee and, or talk about it, or we request that you talk about it. Um, so I, I wanted setting aside the full equity lens review process, which I think requires a work plan between us, Jennifer and Pamela, and maybe even human rights commission, Jennifer mentioned, but that requires a conversation with Paul that I haven't had to have yet. Um, but this piece about the charge, I wanted to address and see if anyone had any feedback. You're muted, Jennifer. No, I have to get to it. Is it? Oh, I can pull it up. Okay. Thank you. That'd be great. Since, you know, I was looking at it myself. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, I thought it was really interesting when I reread this, um, Mandy, I think we m have slightly different ideas about, um, so when I read the town council for form content and organization to assure they are clear, consistent and actionable, and maybe that just means content just means literally the words, right? It doesn't mean the substance of the content. Right. Okay. Okay. So then I can clearly see that, that, that it's making, that that is a clear connection there. It's not like, so when I first read it, I was like, wait, content, no content. I thought we weren't doing content. And maybe like even, I don't know. Yeah, so I'm looking at the other charges because, you know, I, I don't want us to get bogged down as a council in things going to 12 different committees and getting passed back and forth between committees, right? And so I don't want it to finish and TSO say, come to us, I'm going to use water regulations, come to us and we go, you know, I don't think this is quite equitable on this grounds, but we can't touch it. So back to you guys um, and then back to us when you're done, you know. It just it bogs things down. It it adds a lot of I, I feel like extra but 
unnecessary complication to the process, including for people trying to follow the process, right? Oh, we thought it was done and not getting changed and now it's back. Like, you yeah. know, um, and so I'm looking at the other charges. Um, I, and, um, you know, what we may be able to do is recommend, and I haven't figured out how this would happen because within the charge itself, it doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because just like our charge, it's review and make recommendations on measures X, review and make recommendations on measure Y, right? But the purpose is, you know, advise the council on matters that I'm looking at the TSO one right now, the council on matters concerning the day-to-day -day provision of services by Amherst government and relations between the town and community. Maybe we could recommend in each of these purposes, you know, rules, organization, governance, and reviews legislation proposed to the town council, figure out a way to add to the purpose, um, you know, using various, you know, and making recommendations. I, I, like I said, I don't know the wording, but that, that adds to those purposes within um, reviews of, you know, ensuring equity and climate lens and all of these things that we put that into each charge's purpose. Um, you know, that we're not, you know, in addition to just reviewing matters for CRC that deal with planning and zoning, say, we're reviewing them over, you know, the overarching review is just, you know, for these particular things, you know, like, at, as well as others, right, including but not limited to type language of equity lenses, climate lenses, um, benefits to the, you know, public purpose, right, <laughs> you know, things like that, that maybe we can just recommend figuring out a way to add that into the purposes of all committees if, if we want it specifically stated. I, I think that is a really, really great solution. And I was thinking along those lines because when, so <clears throat> you may have seen that Applewood sent a letter to the AHRA, um, the Applewood uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion folks. I sent it along, I think, to the full town council, um, but they referenced our resolution and some wording in the bottom of the, the um, structural racism resolution about making sure that what we're doing is, is is, is following in that, and we could pull it up, like is, is equitable, is, um, you know, and a lot of a few other things too. But I was thinking about like, given that we passed that resolution, given that we now have a DEI department, given that we're all working so hard to use those lenses, how can we just make that clear in each of our charges? And I think what you're suggesting, Mandy, is a really good way to do that. And so maybe just thinking about what sort of language would cover, and I think including the climate as well, um, would and that would be part of every committee's charge. Yeah, yeah. that's a good yeah. solution. Yeah, yeah. I think we'd have to come up with some standard language, um, and we might be able to. What I'm trying to not not that my my um, item is working, but um, trying to come up with our rules. Um, you know, have. Um, oh something's going our on value here. or like our values yeah, have that value statement at the end that that do a lot of things and so maybe we can reference that you know of you know to ensure you know as you know in part to ensure you know we're reviewing all of these the purpose is to review xyz for tso say in part to ensure that they meet these particular values whatever they are i'm having a problem pulling them up because my I can find them in the, um, you and know, my, I hope... my application just isn't opening it. That's all. Oh, okay. I'll I, have actually it in a was, I, I was going to ask Athena about that because when I've tried to Google our rules, I can't ever get a return um, that has our like latest rules as they have been updated this year. Um, and maybe it's just not returning Athena, um, but. I don't know. I don't know why that is, but um, the the link I am using online has the rules as last revised June six. I don't think there has been a revision past June six. Um, 
but it's on the the council page. Um, I'm not sure how well Google works with our website, I, and and I don't um, think it does. <laughs> um, and I think our website is sometimes tricky about finding the right thing when there are so many versions out there on the website. But but if you go to the town council page, there's a, a link on the left hand side that says town policies. Mm. And the rules of procedure are in in there. The most up to date version is there. And I just refresh that same link whenever we change the rules so that the link never changes. So if you bookmark that link, even when the rules are amended, um, the link won't break. So that should be always up to date. Perfect. Okay. Uh, I'm on here now. I'm just trying to- Athena talk. recommends exactly what I did. I just bookmarked the policy page so that that takes me to the rules of procedure. It takes me to some of our other policies, and then I can just click on them to know I've got the most up-to-date one. Oh, Which I see. Going right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so we could, you know, some of these are, some of these um, statement of values relate to us as counselors, right? Um, so we could potentially just identify certain statements of values within this, in each of the charges, the DEI, the environmental sustainability, um, fiscal responsibility, um, you know, those are the ones that pop out particularly for sort of substantive review right now. Yeah. But, Yeah, I like I like that. I like that. I just I'm looking at one. Let me just um, I think it's really good to to like reference the things I like to see like in um uh like the the um special legislation that you and Honor propose, like when we reference the housing plan, you know, like when we actually reference things that we already have, it just builds on the foundation. Um, so I was just looking up. So I could come up with some language for each of the charges by the next meeting. Um, do you, you I, I presume I, I would try to use the same language for each charge, which is why I say that it might be a little different in terms of how to fit it into the purpose statement, but um, I could try to do that for the four committees, um, the council right, committees. The council committees. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um, beyond the three I mentioned of environmental sustainability, DEI and fiscal responsibility, do you see any others on here that should be particularly called out for sort of that type of lens review. I just, can I share my screen quickly? Oh, sure. Pull that down and I'll share what I'm looking at here. Just um, again, coming back to the, uh, ugh, never do this, the structural racism resolution. Um, so this second, be it further resolved, affirms its commitment to eradicate effects through the town affiliate. We'll review and revise its policies, procedures, bylaws, values, goals, and missions through an anti-racism lens to foster an unbiased and inclusive environment that is free of discrimination, harassment, and negative stereotyping toward any person or group. Is that something you might be able to work with in the language that you um, draft, Mandy, to sort of include some of that somehow. Yeah. Don't take that down yet. I'm copying I won't. And it so I, I don't have, have to find the document. The bathroom. I'm sorry. I'll be right back. I'm going to turn my camera off quickly. And I have my mute on because there's a big truck outside. <laughs>
All right. Do you want me to stop this share, Mandy? Or are you still looking at this one? Oh, you're muted. Sorry, I just muted. Um, <laughs> I'm good with that. You can, <laughs> you can take that down. Yeah. So, it, so the plan will be that, Mandy, thank you so much. Um, you'll be willing to draft some language and then we'll bring it back for our next meeting. In time for our next meeting. All right. And that's yeah. the tw 28th. Okay, great, great. Thank you. Um, and that sounds like a really great solution. I think if it's if it's if it is approved, um, it will really show that we are, you know, not just putting these things out there like values and and resolutions, but we're actually really acting on them and including them in our work. So. Um, all right. Well, I oh, we have some minutes. Um, I think. Although I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't done the August seventeenth minutes. That's just fallen to past things on my to do list. Um, but I will try to get those done for your next meeting. Sorry about that. That's no problem. Okay, so let me just. Why can't I find? Um, so August 31st, um, I did, I, are they, let me, I hope I put them in the packet. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that was weird. Anyone have the packet, the SharePoint open? It only had my thing in it in the minute and the agenda in it as of this morning. Okay. I do have the minutes from the 31st. So since we're not, since it's only 10.06, should I go ahead and put them in the packet and pull them up and we can review them and try to get them approved? Or should we just wait? Should I just put them in for next time and we'll just wait? Any preference? I don't have a preference. I'm sorry, it's so noisy out. So I don't <laughs> okay. Either is fine with me. Yeah. All right. Um. Here, let me just... Let me see here. Here we go. Are you pulling them up now? I can add them to the online packet real quick. Yes, okay. I was I was going to, yes. Um, if that yeah. I'll save them into our SharePoint first and then um, let's see here. Here we go. Nine fourteen. All right. So they're in there now, and then I'll share the screen. And so maybe we can just take two minutes to read them.
Oops, sorry. Why does it keep doing? Oh, and just as a mention that, uh, as you know, the snow and ice was successfully rever referred back to us. Yeah. So we'll make sure that's on the next agenda as well. So just let me know when you're done reviewing them. I'm done. Fine for me. Done. Okay. All right. So I will move to approve the meeting minutes for August 31st, 2022. Second. Great. Um, and Mandy? Um, I. 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 <laughs> Ice chorus. <laughs> Unanimous. Yeah. Was it Pat who talked about using I versus I? You know, I've started doing it in council meetings. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. And then when I hear someone say yes, I want to like say, you know, like I had this little thing in the back of my head remembering that conversation. <laughs> All right, great. So um, that is all set. So can we just do a quick review of the next agenda to make sure I have everything? Um, so we know we have the snow and ice for sure. Oh, oh, sorry, Michelle. I know I know we don't have anybody in the attendees list, but we should do the public comment thing really quickly too before you adjourn, just a reminder. Sure, absolutely. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call for a public comment period. Is it, if no one's there, should I still read the statement? Do you, do you all read the statement when no one's there? I just make a statement that no one is in the audience. Okay, so we do not have any attendees. Um, this would have been the public comment period. If somebody does come in between now and the time that we adjourn, uh, we'll certainly offer another time. I'll, I'll announce it again. Um, thank you, Athena. Um, so snow and ice, and then we have the equity piece, um, just, uh, go ahead. So I, while you were taking your breaks and all, um, I came up with some language. If people would like to try and finish that today, um, we can look at an attempt at language that can be added into all of them. I'm, I'm good with that. Yeah. Since we have time. Yeah, that would be great. Okay, let me get it on something I can share. So the red it would be what would be added to each purpose statement. It is the same for everyone. Just so you don't have to read. And I think it works with every purpose statement, but... Um, it's my first attempt. All I can right. go back to the drawing board. Let's look here. That sounds great. Absolutely perfect <laughs> in my mind. <laughs> yeah. So we. That would be part, this would be on the consent agenda or first it would be in your report back? 
So okay. if we make a motion, our motion would be to recommend that the council adopt revisions to the purpose statement of these four committees to add the phrase X, since it's the exact same phrase yeah. at the end of each one. Um, if it's a unanimous vote, it goes on consent. That might not mean it stays on consent, but. But it will be outlined in a report in the next GOL report. So if, even if it's on consent, excuse me, consent, it will be clear from the report what our deliberation was on this and how we came to this solution. And then if someone wants to pull it off, they can. Um, if it doesn't get pulled off, it just gets automatically approved and each of the charges would be updated accordingly. Um, but if it does get pulled off, then it dep depends on what the discussion is. <clears throat> and what it, maybe someone says, well, I want you to take it back and add this or take this out or, or whatever. Right. But if it's but we're empowered to make these recommendations, which is which is great. Sorry, Jennifer. Yeah, no, and then if it's on the consent and it's not pulled, then it's done. Right. <laughs> so I think hopefully that will happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, although I will say <laughs> in this case, I would, I'd be tempted to pull it off consent just so the public would have the opportunity to hear because they right. certainly aren't reading the GOL reports. <laughs> and I don't think they're, or most probably aren't, and they're probably not um, looking at the consent agenda with any amount of you know, in this case, I don't know. I don't know how we might just announce that we've done this because I think it's really great. Well, you could certainly do it in your GOL report. Good I point. was going to say the same thing during the committee reports at the end of the evening. Um, you could mention it if it passes on consent. That's perfect. Well, great. I'm I'm ready to to move, to go with this. If if you are all, are all are. Mm -hmm. Um, um, may, may I ask a quick question? I'm sorry, I should use the rain, raise hand when I want to say something. Yeah. Sorry, I don't do that. <laughs> Mandy, I can't read fast enough. It's the same for all the committees, right? It is the same. Okay. I literally copied and pasted for okay. all committees. I will Great. send you this document, but it is the same for every committee. I snipped the language. I just wanted to double okay. check that I don't need to snip it four times. No, you don't. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. All right. So, would some would anyone feel inclined to make the motion? Um, I'll I'll try to word something because um, yeah. I I think it's to recommend the council revise the purpose statement of the GOL CRC TSO and finance charges to add the phrase comma giving attention to meeting the council's statement of values particularly those of diversity equity and inclusion environmental sustainability and fiscal responsibility as well as ensuring that measures foster an unbiased an unbiased and inclusive environment that is free of discrimination harassment and negative stereotype stereotyping toward any person or group at the end of each state each purpose statement Okay. Did that motion? <laughs> I don't know if you needed the. I don't know if you needed the at the end of each because I think you said, um, to the purpose. Um, to but the end of each purpose statement. If I say that, then I don't need the last part. Right. Exactly. But we'll see if Athena. I lost track of what I'd said while I was reading the phrase. <laughs> yeah. Athena, did you did you get that? Um, I have purpose statement twice, but I think that's okay. To recommend the council revise the purpose statement of the GOL, CRC, TSO, and Finance Committee's charges to add the phrase. phrase. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, to add to the end of them the phrase. Uh, and then I think you can stop at the at, at the the reading of the phrase then. The phrase. Okay, great. Got it. All right. And I think Jennifer seconded it. Seconded. Yeah. Okay, great. So um, the only discussion is to say thank you 
I just really want to say thank you that we work together on this, do this and and so quickly. And so that's awesome. <laughs> um, and we'll vote. Mandy? Aye. Jennifer? Aye. And I'm an I. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So getting back to the agenda for, ne for next week then, um, or next time we meet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I have snow and ice. I have hopefully um, a work plan that I've worked out with DEI about like an equity lens review process. Although I'm curious, I'll put it, I'm curious just, this is what I really, when I brought this forward, what we just did is what I was hoping to do. So I'm not sure necessarily that, and we don't have Pat and Aniki here to weigh in on this right now. So maybe it's worth adding it to the agenda yeah. for time. Okay. So we'll just like re-add it and I won't really do anything in terms of like other than maybe getting another update, I do think it's really important that the DEI department has the time to like work through all the stuff that they're doing. So right. without us, you know, trying to, so, um, and then in terms, can the town manager review process that by the time that we meet next, I'm just, I'm not clear if there's something that we will need to do. Um, I think so. You don't think so, Jennifer? No, I don't think there's anything this committee has to do. do so the next, not, what is the next thing we have to do, Mandy? Not for the manager review process. We have to start thinking about manager goals and the modification of the goals. And so the question is, and I think this is where Mich maybe we can talk about it today. Um, do we discuss goals, propose some revisions, take them to the council, let them talk about them and then come back? Or do we start at the council, see what they might want to revise sort of without having discussed them in GOL at all and then come back? Um, because the timing of that is different on when we as a committee first discuss the goals, um, whether we're going to discuss them before the council has any discussion or not, or whether we're not going to touch them until we've heard from the council. I, do we want to propose changes to the council, then hear from them, or do we want to hear from them without having discussed it at all here? Jennifer? Okay, so I have to admit, I did not realize the actual goal discussion started with us, because I, I was really wondering where, when we looked through the, the, the timeline that we, you know, approved or whatever that we, at the meeting this week, it almost looked to me like the goal setting started with the town manager. I was trying to, but mm. I'm, yeah. So I would like to discuss that because I am not clear on how do we work with the goals from last year and go from there? Yeah, how does that process? But, so, Mandy, before you respond, I just wanna make sure we're not violating anything because it was not on our agenda. agenda. We're talking about it in terms of future agenda, but would you say we're right. in? we're in within that realm? I think we are um, okay. because we're trying to decide whether when it needs to first go on an agenda. Okay. Um, and so in the past, yeah. Okay. Um, the goals have been drafted by GOL um, with consultation with the manager sometimes, um, but they have basically sat, what I would say is they've sat in GOL. They have not been, there has always been council comment on them but GOL is where all the revisions were discussed and then brought to council. Does, does that make sense? And so this last iteration of goals, which has now been used for two sets of years, I think, um, the, the format that they look like now um, with these overarching ones and all, I think we are in our second year of using that format. That format came out of a GOL discussion, um, then went to the council, came back for revision, last year which would have been sort of the second year of using them so you already had that basic format um i think what gol did i i can't remember but i think gol proposed revisions the council talked about them added some potentially other goals too while talking about the proposed revisions and then it went back to gol to 
deal with that discussion, ad address all of the concerns of whatever was proposed, add in anything that GOL didn't do that other counselors wanted it to do, and then it went back to the council for final adoption. So I think it started in GOL with just the GOL members saying, hey, these are the ones that might have been met. These haven't been met. Here's where we really need to get stronger here, you know, based on, in some sense, the manager's self-evaluation, because he'll go through when you see and mm -hmm. say, here's the goal. Here's what I did. Here's what I didn't. Um, and so I think GOL last year took that self-evaluation, looked at the goals, said, you know, we were really, as a council, weren't happy with X either the wording or it didn't get done, it needs stronger wording, or we need to add Y. And then we went to the council, that draft went to the council, the council commented on it, it went back to GOL and then for changes based on that conversation and then back to the council. So we can do the same process this year, or we could start with, which I, if that's the process we want, I would recommend getting it on our agenda sooner rather than later, um, because it will take a couple of meetings for us to work through those discussions and draft language um, for the changes. If we, or you can start at the council and say, you know, GOL hasn't discussed it at all. Council, what changes do you want to the goals? Oh, so Let's, what is the process right. for individual counselors? You know, so is if we're just, just, you know, if we want to add new goals, if we weren't on the council last year, so. That's where either if you're on GOL, you, you get to talk about it I a know, lot. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not on GOL, that's where the council discussion comes yeah, in, which okay. is why the question is, do we start as GOL where then now we've got sort of five already in there and maybe we've covered all 13 or do we start, you know, and then say, hey, based on these five counselors, basically, you know, this committee, this is where we think the changes need to be. We've got a nice mix here of new counselors, non-new counselors, right, that have been involved and not? Um, or do you start at the council and say, have at it, council, what do you want us to do as GOL? Um, I think it's more, personally, I would start at GOL. It's probably more efficient. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because we actually chose the opposite for the first, like, conversation, and that was on Monday. And because there was like no framework, it didn't really solicit any, any discussion whatsoever. Um, you know, it was put out there, but then really the timeline was already in the consent agenda. It had already been changed based on what we had recommended. So I agree. I think that we should take it here to give a structure and, and prompt for the, uh, the, the council to have a discussion. So I would say that would probably be a couple, I mean, that's a major focus of a meeting. Yes, it, it it's a couple of meetings if we're not going to have council comment first. If we already have the council comment, that's where a lot of that work's done. But if we're starting it ourselves, it's at least two meetings. Yeah. That okay. It needs to be on the agenda. And does it need to be, so here's town manager emails, written self-evaluation -eval on Wednesday, October 5th. So that means we could talk about it for the first time on the 28th before we receive that, and then the second time on the 12th after, or we could just wait until the 12th. Michelle, could you pull the sure. page down a little bit to see when the council's going to have the first goal discussion? Like what, what did that yeah. end up at? Goals were like, uh town manager um, the 21st yeah okay and then we're supposed to vote it the two weeks later under this plan the 22nd of december it's almost a month later um but the fifth if they're ready and then the 22nd oh sorry okay. i missed that yeah yep so so if we discuss it on the 12th, the 26th, and the 9th, we can have something to the council on the 21st. The 12th, the 26th, and the 9th? So the 9th of November. Okay, and that would, would mean- allow us to wait for the self-evaluation. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Jennifer, do you think, I, I, I haven't looked at the goals since 
basically last year, you probably, as a new counselor, you guys probably know what you think's missing. Do you think three meetings before we take it to the council might be enough, depending yes. on? Okay. Yeah. So just kind of thinking, thinking this through though, um, would it make sense for there to be some interim or some, for example, could I send an email to the council and say, we're going to do this. These are the dates that we're going to be doing it. If you have feedback or if you want to attend these meetings or something so that we're not completely just the five of us, you know, for three sessions discussing this without any feedback whatsoever from other counselors. As long, I think I've done that in the past with other things where I've just included a whole list. Um, but they can only go to you. And when I create that list, I anonymize who sent what. So okay. I, I literally just cut and paste the comments without who provided the comments. Okay. Yeah. So and they I, think, uh, you go to me to me and Athena, right? Athena, not that you know Athena. I wouldn't expect Athena to do any work with it, but just to that it goes to us too, and and only us too, and then I can take or no. Would it be better not just to go to? I don't. Know. I I don't need to see the comments. Um, okay. When you receive them, they can go just to you. But when you compile them into a document and share them with the committee, they need to be posted online first. So, um, well simultaneously but <laughs> i'm gonna say first <laughs> yeah um so um you i would just ask that you send them to me before you share them with the committee so um and then once i say okay they're online then you can add them to sharepoint perfect okay that sounds great and jennifer so um do you think when we're discussing this that we you know other counselors may be in the audience or we get a lot of public participation for this or it usually is more under the radar. In, in the past, um, GOL's done it without necessarily inviting the other counselors to the GOL meeting because it will be on multiple council meetings. Um, yeah. where the, and especially if Michelle's doing the send some thoughts in first, um, it, it gets, if, if they're invited, you have to then potentially declare it as a council meeting. And so, you know, um, but what I found in the past is the public pays attention at the council meeting. Um, they okay. may show up at GOL, um, but but they do comment at the council meetings once it's once it shows up in the council packets. I was just gonna. Can you see this still? Oh, Athena, yes. You don't have to raise your hand, but you can. <laughs> <laughs> I would I would suggest if you if you want to, I agree that the public pays attention at the council meetings and um, it might be, you know, the question about whether or not counselors attend the GOL meeting. Um, if there seems to be a lot of interest or if you want to offer when you solicit feedback from the council, if you want to say if you would like to attend the GOL meeting and participate to let you know so that we know if we have a quorum and we need to post it as a joint meeting. Otherwise, counselors can only attend in the audience and um, participate during the right. public comment period. And, you know, that even that gets a little squirrely. Yeah. Okay, sure. Just pulling these up quickly, I just wanted to, um, so we have, I mean, yeah, this is a big, this is a, sort of like the closest to a vision statement we have really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is an important document, you know, kind of the work plan for the town manager. Yeah. It's this a lot. One, <laughs> this, this one might get built up a bit. No, sorry. Did I just express an opinion? <laughs> this wasn't on the agenda. <laughs> just taking a wild guess. That's <laughs> where you can't touch in this meeting. I just, I just, I'm sorry. I retract that. Um, okay. So I'm going to stop this. Um, and it sounds like I will be sending. Now, is this an email? Is it too early to send this email out to counselors or should I? Time it. 
I just don't want Lynn to, I'll check in with Lynn, of course. I don't want her to feel like I'm confusing or muddying any of the rest of the process that needs to occur, which is actually. It's probably fine to send it now, as long as the dates are clear that we're not okay. going to be discussing till, because some counselors really appreciate the length of time given, you know, having more time to think about it and yeah. respond than getting it three days before you need to post a packet. <laughs> I would suggest periodic reminders before that meeting as well. <laughs> Absolutely. And so is the goal for us to have that compilation ready for October 12th, the first time we talk about it, I assume? So it, I think that would be ideal. If we've got that, we might be able to finish our initial work in two meetings instead of three, right? <laughs> you never know. Great. So that's like a month that gives a lot of time, but you know, if I get it out in the next couple of days. Okay. All right. And then um, the special act we're waiting, it's been referred to us, but only after it goes through finance. So that's not something that we have to worry about right now. Um, Mandy wanted to check in with you. The rubric is that now off the table? Does that need to come come? Is that been dealt with? The matrix that had gotten there was like a referral to us about I mean, the uh, from CRC referral. for the interviews. For the interviews, we haven't dealt with that referral in GOL yet, so it's not off the table. It's just not. It's not necessary for the current set of appointments that are advertised. Okay. I guess I'm just trying. Um, meeting time for next week, because there isn't a ton that is that, would it be okay to bring it for next time? Okay. Right. And then, um, I'm just going to look at Am I still sharing screen or no? No. no. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I need to step away for just a minute. Sure. Um, just peeking at this real quick. Just... Now you're sharing screen. Yes, screen. I meant I meant to. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> okay. Oh goodness. Pakistan and India Independence Day. Is there I haven't okay. So Shalini talked about that at the last at the first no at the august meeting or something right um so i'm not she's the one that wrote it and sponsored it last year so you okay. should talk to her about whether she's going to continue you know whether she wants it done again okay all right so in okay yeah i'll talk to her um and then october do you know if the middle eastern cultural holiday has a proclamation we've never done one since i've been on the council okay and small business saturday is that just an event that's not a necessarily a, a, a proclamation right it's, it's been a proclamation um oh. talk to the chamber and bid um i forget if last year's the year it was revised to be a little more local specific okay um, or whether the goal was to oh we should make it that way and it should be the chamber and bid that do it not crc and so they need more time okay um, so maybe i send this yeah all right yeah this one's very basic and so basic. send it to chamber and bid and say do you want revisions to this that make it more amor specific local okay great because I know last year GOL kind of wanted it more local, but we weren't going to do the work that we felt the chamber and bid should do the work. Okay, that's good. And then I'll check. I know Anika um, had mentioned to me about Native American Heritage Month. So I think she's been in some conversations about uh, with um, some folks about that. So I'll check with her about that. All right. Um, I think that's about it, unless there are any other items that haven't been anticipated. Um, and I don't see anybody in the attendees. So um, I guess I'll, oh, Athena, are you back? Okay. 
we'll, we'll have to wait to we'll wait to adjourn until she's back <laughs> definitely <laughs> Are you waiting to adjourn? Yeah, that's okay. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Athena. So I'm I'm gonna adjourn at 10:39 a.m. Thank you. Good meeting. Yeah, great meet. Yeah. I see. I said it wasn't gonna be a shining moment, but it did. But it was. <laughs> Pretty darn good. Good. Have so a good day. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Thank you.